rebuilding. A catastrophic failure, a new start. Physically, mentally, our careers, our businesses. Step back, first step, next step. The driver in me just wants to get it done tomorrow. We'll do this, do that, let's move this, where are we at with this? You build some confidence, build some self-esteem, start to feel better about yourself. The Silverback Blueprint Podcast, a show for men over 40. We focus on getting stronger, staying motivated, building discipline, creating a community, and becoming truly happy. Hey guys, before we get started on today's podcast, I just want to take a minute to let you guys know that our new Work Hard Motherfucker t-shirts are now available at HostileGear.com. Head on over there, use the, the code SILVERBACK and save 20% and get this badass t-shirt. I know a lot of people have been, been saying, hey, what a great idea, can't wait to get it. So now it's up there, it's in color, it looks awesome, and uh, make sure to get yours AS to the AP. And now, on to the episode. Hey guys, and welcome to the Silverback Blueprint. Does complaining really work? So in the last episode, we talked about the anger tank, uh, the internal rage, um, my way of trying to channel, you know, those negative energies, those negative emotions when they, when they well up inside and and they, they start to come to surface. Um, so this kind of led into, uh, what I, from there into this episode, when I was making some notes is, you know, we all have, um, days or situations that are crappy, or at least they seem that way in the moment. Right. So we sit there and we're trucking along, mind your own business. And some guy cuts us off or, you know, the phone rings when you're trying to record a, a podcast or, or that kind of thing. But, you know, I always, I always wonder is, does the pissing and moaning achieve anything? You know, when you get, you, you sit there and you're like, oh, fuck this. And I'm mad and I'm pissed off or you're around other people. And, you know, I, I think if anything, when we're sitting there and, and sort of dwelling in it and wallowing in it, I think it just pushes, pushes us deeper into that negative mindset. Right. I, I like everything else, you know, momentum starts getting created. And I think that's super important. So I think what we need to do when we find ourselves you know, in that poor me or that negative mode or we're, we're bitching or we're in a bitch fest and stuff is, you know, we, a really good question, a great question, in fact, is when we find ourselves, you know, crying or gnashing our teeth, you know, stop for a second and just ask ourselves, is this actually going to make me feel better? Is this making me feel better? Is carrying on, you know, in this manner, resolving anything? Is it doing anything for me to get through this situation? Right? You know, if someone around you is losing their shit and stuff, you know, you can ask them the same question. In fact, if we look back when, you know, when our kids were little, you know, and they were having a temper tantrum and stuff, right? You could see them get worked up and then more and more worked up and worked up and worked up. And I always felt that, you know, you just needed to find a way to interrupt them, right? So that question is a great interruption because you break that cycle, Right. And, you know, if, if they can't calm down after that or not saying, well, then you just, you know, you got to remove yourself from the situation because it's contagious too. I really believe in that. Um, but that whole, when you get caught up in that, and we've all been there, right? We, we get pissed off. Something didn't go right. Something's not happening. You know, we missed out on something. We feel we've been slighted, you know, and we start complaining and then we start blaming, right? And quite honestly, that's the easy way. That really is. And I think that's why it's such a an automatic response for a lot of people is that it's just easy to do, right? You know, it's far more difficult to look at a situation calmly when we're upset, you know, logically looking inward. Why are we upset, right? Is this, this, is the situation worth this? You know, is there truly something to worry about? Now, don't get me wrong. You know, if you're sitting somewhere and there's an altercation and someone's trying to kick the shit out of you, yes, get angry and deal with it, right? But stay calm and focus so you can deal with it appropriately, Right. So you kind of have to triage your situation overall. But I think a lot of times when we find ourselves just in that negative spiral, right, look inside, take a minute, recognize the fact that you're in that state, you know, and say, hey, why am I, why am I feeling this shitty? And then try to look inward and what is really bothering me? And maybe it really is a situation, right? Maybe it's you're pissed off because you feel, you know, because you got cut off. But really what's happening is you're late, you're in a hurry, right? And at the same token, anything that happens around us is going to heighten that sense of anxiousness and stuff. So if we look inward and logically, well, why are we late? Right? Those are the ways to, I think, to try to look at the situation. And let's look more at the cause, not so much, you know, the effect that we're into. You know, um, 
sometimes we get super upset. Like I said earlier in the last episode, we just ramp up really quick. You know, we, we, we hit some areas that are really raw. And maybe it is a situation that we have a lot of work left to do to deal with. Who knows? But the one thing we need to remember as well is misery loves company, right? You know, when we're upset, we also want other people to side with us. Right. So that's why we'll, we'll, we'll find people or even ourselves will vent. I'm like, Oh, can you believe this happened? You know? And they're like, yeah, I hate when that happens. And then, you know, you feel like you're more justified when that happens. Right. You feel like you're, you're in the right to be upset. And you know what? At the end of the day, when we start doing that, right, we're just finding reasons to stay angry. We're, we're finding reasons to stay negative and it should be the opposite. In fact, you know, when you recognize that you should, you need to abruptly shut, shut that shit down. Just stop change your mindset right and sometimes it can be something as simple as you know see an image in your mind that's positive right get your remove yourself from the situation or do an exercise and i don't mean a physical exercise i mean a mental exercise pull yourself aside mentally and say hey listen let's let's think about three things i'm really grateful for right and if we do that we can change our state of mind and we change our perspective and it can be done instantaneously right and to me, that's super important. Ask yourself that question again. What, is this really helping the situation? Is me getting upset? Is me thinking negatively? Right? You know, is that really dealing with the situation? Is it making it any better? Take a pause. Take a deep breath. Again, recognize that you're in this state. And then do your best to change it as fast as you can. Right? I think the biggest problem too is that once we start getting carried away, right, we won't see the solutions that are sometimes right in front of us because we're not being logical, we're not being calm. If we can take that deep breath, if we can reset and even talk to ourselves in our mind, say, hey, listen, you know, why am I so upset? What am I looking at? What am I not seeing here? Right? And I think if we do that mentally, we'll actually start to do that outwardly as well. So if you're in an argument with someone, having a disagreement, it's very powerful if all of a sudden you stop and say, listen, you know, I, I feel we're both really getting upset right now. It's not the way I want it to be. Can we look at this differently? Or can we put this on pause and come back to it? Or even say, you know, how do we get to this? How do we get to this? Why, you know, what caused this? And that is super powerful because it'll trigger that other person. And let's say that other person is just being totally unreasonable and you've done this. Well, that's a big logical sign saying, hey, you know what? This person is being totally unreasonable. So you only can control yourself. So you, that's where you turn and say, listen, I think we have to stop here. Right? You take control of yourself. And a lot of times that'll de-escalate a situation. And even if it doesn't, you're, you're dealing with your own self, your responsibility. You step away. Right. Again, not a license to be a douchebag and cause people pain and then say, oh, well, that's the, you know, I don't see what the problem is here. Uh, let's take a moment. Let's take a breather. Let's put a pin in it for now. Don't be that. Right. Because that's not taking responsibility for the situation. Right. You know, at the end of the day, um, we're our own biggest source of anger and angst. It comes from within. And I think if we can learn to control that, if we can jam some of that shit back into the anger tank and use it at a later date when we really need it. Right. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't let a negative situation define us, right? I, I think we need to focus on having more control, right? If we're sitting there and, you know, we're, we're happy for the moment because something positive is happening and then we're sitting there and then we're negative the next moment because something we perceive being negative is happening to us. Well, at the end of the day, we become a slave to our emotions, Right? All we're doing is reacting. We're not in any kind of control, right? And to me, that's all on us, right? It's a long, tiring day when you're up and down because you come across as being manic. We hear terms like bipolar and manic and stuff like that. And yes, there's situations where people have those, those issues. But I think in a lot of cases is that we're stuck living moment to moment, right? I'm happy now and I need something to make me happy in two more minutes, right? That's that whole thing where we talk about people getting addicted to the social media channels and, and, and likes and, and things like that. And, you know, checking their Facebook over and over again. Fuck, guys, I, I do it. I do it a lot, right? I get it. 
you know, you want to see if there's positiveness. You want to see if someone's reaffirming you. You know, it's a fucking popularity contest sometimes, right? But really what we're doing is we're trying to feed that, that hunger of, you know, I want to be felt, I want to feel good. I want to feel good about myself. I want people to tell me I'm great, right? It becomes addictive and stuff. And in the moment we don't get that, then all of a sudden we spiral backwards, or we become, it's like our guard is down and then the next little negative thing takes us and just knocks all the positive shit that we just went through, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, our life sucks and what's going on and I'm tired and people don't get me and this isn't fair. And we're going to stay in that state until something positive happens again. But, you know, we, we're sitting there and we're waiting. We're, we're waiting to be happy. We're waiting to be sad. And that, to me is what we have to fix that's to me is that's where we have to take control back that's where we're in control of how we perceive things and that's where having a strong identity and a strong purpose is super important because those are the things that are going to help define us and help us maintain the state that we want to be in throughout the day and again guys always easier said than done but it takes time it takes practice but you do get better at it i know i'm getting better at it and I still have times. And, and it's funny now because I'll catch myself mentally. I'm like, oh, all right, all right, you're losing your shit here. Or why are you getting so upset, right? I had a situation where one of uh, my staff members contacted me. We were trying to, to get, uh, I think it was getting a treadmill back. And we were dealing with a lady that was, you know, being a little hard to deal with. And, and my staff was feeling that, you know, was feeling that's anxious and she didn't want to upset that lady and stuff. And this lady wanted it down at this time. If you can't do it at time and do it this time. And then, you know, my staff wanted to send a big long letter email to them. And I said, you know what? I said, listen, let's just take a step back and let's look at this logically. What are the next, you know, available times that we can pick this treadmill up? So she told me, I said, perfect. Send that in an email and say, listen, we're, you know, just simply state, here are the next three possible dates and times that we can pick up this treadmill. Which one would you prefer? Rather than going through this long rigmarole and trying to make this person feel better or feel or whatever, right? And again, we're reading our own stuff into it. I could tell my staff was getting anxious about the situation because they didn't want to upset the client, but they knew we had to get the job done and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? Just take all that out. Just make it logical. Here's the next three times and dates that we can pick that treadmill up. Which one works for you? And I think sometimes if we're more direct and we're logical and we take the emotion out of it, it makes a difference because you know what? 30 seconds later, I got a text back from my staff saying, she'll take it next Saturday at 1 p.m. Right? That made the biggest difference. And it was really cool because at that point, I could feel my staff person was getting anxious about it. I could feel the emotions coming up. Right? And I could even understand the client. They're like, well, this doesn't work for me. This doesn't work for me and stuff. And I, you know, I sat there and I recognized it. And that's where I calmly said, hey, let's deal with this this way. And the solution was right there. So it was pretty cool. It's pretty powerful. So it's always nice that when we're trying to acquire a new skill and we use it, it works out. Because sometimes we're going to try and use that new skill and it's going to cause a fucking plane crash, right? It just, it, it takes time to hone your skills overall. You know, I know some people sometimes deal with the fact that, you know, they hold all their anger in till they finally blow. And that's not good, right? Because they don't want to be upset and they don't like being upset and they don't want to upset other people, right? Well, that's too much going the other way as well because what's going to happen is you're going to sit there one day and you're going to stub your toe on something and you're going to destroy the room because that was the tipping point. That was the final thing that broke the camel's back. And you're going to, given the situation, really overreact. And when you overreact, it's when you cause a lot of other problems. That's when you say shit you shouldn't have said. It's when you hurt feelings of other people that you care about. That's when you go too far. That's when you break something valuable. It's when you hurt yourself further. So having that thing we talked about earlier about that anger tank, super important. But again, we have to have that way to channel that and release it. So for me, a big part of it and a big part that we talk about all the time for you guys is having that physical release. The workout, super important, super important. Tap into that anger. Tap into where you have it stored, and that's when you release it, when you want to fucking quit, but there's 20 more reps to do. That's when you go and let some of that energy out. That's when you go and harness it for a positive situation, and you get it out of your system. There's nothing better than sitting back at the end of a workout when you're fucking gassed, and you know you gave it everything you could, plus a little bit more. You found a little bit more right? Chemically, the endorphins are rushing, but that sense of accomplishment, right? That sense of victory. 
super, super important, right? And to me, that's a much more positive situation because that pressure is going to build up one way or the other. And then it's going to manifest itself later on in super high stress. It's going to manifest itself in high blood pressure. It's going to manifest itself in fucking bad decisions based on anger and emotions rather than logic and calm, right? Or you're going to fucking blow the ultimate valve and have a fucking heart attack or a fucking aneurysm, right? That, and that's the reality of it, guys. That's the real reality of it. It happens. We see it around us. Stress kills. There's no fucking way around it. So again, we need to control it. We need to get better at handling it because it's not going to go away. We're not going to lead a life void of stress. It's impossible, right? So we need to know that stress is going to happen and it's up to us how we deal with it. And there's nothing fucking cooler than watching someone in a situation where everyone's losing their fucking shit and some guy comes in and they're cool, calm, cool, and collected and they deal with it. To me, that's impressive, right? That's like getting that game-winning goal. But you got put in a situation, you have a job to do, and you got a fucking done, right? That's where I want to be. That's where I want to have that mastery of oneself. That's where I want to be where I'm in control of my emotions and stuff. So I dictate the day. I, d- I dictate what mood and state I'm going to be in for the majority of the day. And when I come off course, I have tools and, and ways of correcting that course. I have standards for myself where I will not allow myself to get this angry again. But then... The responsibility is have to learn how to deal with it, have to learn, develop skills to make sure that doesn't happen. That's our responsibility again. And as always, guys, like anything else that's worthwhile, you got to work hard, motherfuckers. You've got to work on those areas and stuff. Guys, that's all I got to say about that today. Head on over to iTunes. Leave us a five-star rating and an awesome review. That really helps us out. Um, Again, head on over to HostileGear.com. Use the code SILVERBACK to get 20% off. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.